We don't care what walk of life you come from. Being prepared needs to be inclusive. I hate that fucking word, but it needs to be inclusive because disaster is an equal opportunist. It doesn't give a fuck who you are. It doesn't care what race, what wealth bracket you come from. It will hand you your ass. So our thing was, if you plan for the worst case scenario, by default, you're covering everything in between. So yeah, we use in, in, in our verbiage, worst case scenarios. But we're not trying to be doom and gloom because we're talking about practicalities. My guys teach self-defense. Uh, 2019 is the last statistic. 400, around 400 uh, justified shootings, according to civilians. Not a high probability you're going to be in a fucking gunfight. But you should learn to defend yourself and your family with responsible firearms uh, ownership and gun handling. That That is not extreme. But when you sum it up and you say, we're a preparedness company. And who owns the preparedness company? A former CIA bootlicker, a fucking uh, a uh, a green beret sniper, whatever that the narrative is, then we fit the narrative for them. Do so you fit the 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 Bundy Ranch sort of hundred percent militia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what is it? Um, Ruby Ridge. Yeah, Ruby Ridge. Yeah. But the idea that they could just label you like that without any examination, and uh, that, uh, that all it has to do is be being prepared. But so then it becomes at what level is preparedness terrorism? Like, can you have food? Can you have guns? I don't think you can. Can you have no. water? Like, what, what at what level are they worried about you? And when you're not saying, hey, we need to overthrow the government, all you're saying is, I don't want to die if the power goes off. Like, yeah. how the fuck does that make you a terrorist? Yeah. Oh and, and you look, if you look at it, too, it's a good relationship and collaboration with guys like us, companies like us, and the government, because we're straining the government less, Yes. right? So when you, you look at this uh, bomb cyclone that ripped through our country, this bomb cyclone came through and then brought a wave of rain across the country that was, that, that dumps snow, rain comes in, it floods everywhere, it fucks up everything. There was a girl, 22 years old, who died in her car on a city street, six minutes from her home. She spent hours in her car, FaceTime, or FaceTiming, messaging her family, and was like, I'm stuck. And I don't know the cause of death, but I likely would venture to say it was probably the snow covering the exhaust, and she died of carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, because that happens, right? If the, if, the, if the snow covers the exhaust, it backfills into the cab, uh, through the engine, and into the vents, and you die of carbon, you simply go to sleep and you die. But if people are dying, which dozens of people in that county in Buffalo, New York died, then us educating people on best practices and tactics on not dying is not should not be seen as extreme. But here's the problem. When I did American Contingency, we had thousands of people on board, hundreds of thousands of people on board. And when you have control in a and the communication to a population let's say it's it's my market but they look at it as like that's your militia they get concerned because the more that you have control or influence then the scarier they become the more oversight they want and that and that's what we've seen it's like the the more that we talk about preparedness it, it doesn't have anything to do with that it's about control but it's just crazy because the influence that you have is influence over people telling them how to take care of themselves that's all it is yeah, I, I, you know, uh, to quote a good buddy, Greg Anderson, um, no one's coming to save you.